A number of years ago, I published a review article with Greg Moran on attachment theory. If you're not familiar with it, attachment theory is about the role of emotional connection, usually with caregivers like parents, in child development. I could go further, but that's, that's it in a nutshell. One of the key ideas is that parenting basically involves two tasks that look like they're going in opposite directions. Task number one, you have to take care of the kid. You make sure they're fed, they're safe, and they feel secure. So you cuddle them, you don't abandon them, and you behave reasonably reliably. Basically, you're caring for them. Second, the other task is to prepare them for your death. What that means is that they have to learn how to take care of themselves and go out and learn about the world and figure things out. Now those tasks, they sound completely the opposite, in and out. Come here and I'm going to do things for you. Go off and do things for yourself. So it sounds like a battle. But it turns out it isn't. Take a little kid and her mom and put them in a big room with a bunch of toys way off at the other end. Strange situation for the kid. As a matter of fact, it's called the strange situation. What happens? Well, at first, most kids cling to mom a bit. Hey, we're in this weird place. Stay close, you know. But as the kid gets used to it, they start venturing a little further and a little further away. And if you've ever been around someone with a two-year-old, you can watch this happening. The kids get a little clingy, right? And then they get interested in things and they wander off. But they keep looking back at mom to see, you know, you still there? Okay, she is. And then they wander a little further off. What happens if you take mom out of the room? and leave that little kid in there alone. It's perfectly safe. There's a hidden camera and there's nothing dangerous in the room. If these two things, exploration and attachment, were in opposition to each other, you'd think that the kid would say, well, mom's not here. I guess I'll play with this stuff. But they don't. Often they just sit down and cry. In case you're wondering, all this is just three minutes at a time, so kids aren't deeply traumatized by it. Now what this shows is that exploration and attachment aren't fighting each other. They're not opposites. The kid has to have a sense of a secure base from which to explore. If there's no base, there's no exploration. All this research happens with tiny little kids, so it's tempting to say, well, big deal, what's this got to do with me? Well, turns out, rather a lot. Mom may not be around anymore, so she is not our secure base, but we still have one. Maybe it's our home. Maybe it's our partner. Maybe it's our city or home country. Maybe, maybe it's Starbucks. Something that's familiar and where we know what we're doing. For me, one of the things that gives me that feeling is being in a coastal rainforest. And when we have that base, we feel more comfortable venturing out and exploring and trying new things. So let's say we dump you off the plane in some huge chaotic city, maybe in Asia. If you're at all a nervous traveler, you feel completely lost. Do you want to see the museum? Not really. Do you want to try one of these restaurants where you can't read the menu? No. What do you want? You want to set up your base. You want to find a place to stay. You want to unpack a bit. You want to breathe. You maybe have a shower. You want to come back to yourself. And then you begin to get a little curious. Let's just, um, let's just walk around the block. Let's get used to it, and gradually you venture forward. The first time I went to Asia, decades ago, my first stop was Hong Kong, which is big and chaotic, but it's pretty easy, actually. People speak English, it's sort of a mix between East and West, but I'd never been to Asia, and it was a bit overwhelming. I wanted to check into my hotel, 
right? First thing. That helped. Then we went exploring around. And eventually, I got off the Star Ferry in Kowloon, and I looked across the square, and I saw a McDonald's. Now, I have to tell you, I hate McDonald's, and I don't like that it's everywhere on Earth making everybody the same. But in that moment, I wanted to be inside that McDonald's more than anything. So I did. And I was exactly like that little kid. After 15 minutes, I'd had enough, and I wanted to go out exploring again. Since then, I've gotten used to Asia, and I don't experience anything like the same thing. I still like checking into my hotel and getting organized, but no McDonald's. And my rule is, I am not allowed in McDonald's, and I am not allowed in Starbucks if I'm outside my own country. I didn't go all that way just to do that. But as we get older, our version of what grounds us changes. At first it might be mom or dad. Maybe that's it. Later on, they may not serve that function for us, so it does change. It's something else. It's a hotel room. It's your apartment. It's a landscape. It's your partner. It's a photo on your home screen of your computer. And hopefully, at least partly, it's inside you. You come back not to mom, but to yourself, and you feel grounded. And when you have that feeling, you feel more able to move outward and explore the world. So, attachment. It's not the opposite of exploration or independence. It's symbiotic. You need at least a little bit of both. If you like some of these ideas, my book, How to Be Miserable, 40 Strategies You Already Use, is available from any bookseller, online or in person.